Hey, come see us on tour. I'll be in Davenport, Iowa, Las Vegas, Nevada, Chicago, Illinois, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go to jimmydoor.com for a link for tickets. Hey, everybody. Uh, I don't know if you remember when we had Dan Cohen on last time to talk about Haiti. He warned that Kenya was going to send a death squad uh, to Haiti to start killing the people who were fighting against the establishment. Well, I want to tell you something. Uh, it happened. Breaking, the first 400 Kenyan police officers have arrived in Haiti to be the backbone of the U.S. engineered and funded occupation designed to keep Haiti mired in poverty. You want to see a little bit of it? So, so let me bring in let me bring in Dan Cohen. Uh, is it, he's an independent journalist, filmmaker based in D.C. He is now currently operates his own journalistic outlet, Uncaptured Media, and his latest documentary is titled Haiti: Intervention versus Revolution. Welcome back to the show, Dan Cohen. How are you? I'm good. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. Good to be with you. Okay, so. Now, these 400 people that got sent here by Kenya to Haiti, are they are they actual criminals? Um, well, I don't think they have been convicted in any kind of court. They are Kenyan uh, police. They are called the Kenyan police paramilitary. And uh, they have basically they, they made the cut um, of of uh, who was allowed of among the Kenyan police to come be part of this mission. You couldn't have more than, um, I believe three criminal convictions. So these are, these are the best and brightest of the Kenyan police. So these are the, these are the cops who have less than three criminal convictions. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. So ex actually, yeah, you're right. Many of them may be very well, maybe uh, convicted criminals. So when I tweeted this out, I just retweeted uh, breakthrough news saying that the first 400 Kenyan police officers have arrived in Haiti to be the backbone of the U.S. engineered and funded occupation designed to keep Haiti mired in poverty. I don't think that's I really don't think that that's controversial in a rational world, right? It's to weaken Russia, right? So this the, the community notes said this is a U.N. backed contingent not a U.S. engineered and funded occupation. <laughs> As stated by this clearly disinformation account, Haiti has consistently grappled with poverty influenced by factors like political instability, <laughs> natural disasters, and economic mismanagement. And the Clinton Foundation. And the Clinton Foundation. And the United States. And the infiltration. So, by the way, they, I, I, tweet, I retweeted that and I tagged Elon Musk and I said that it, clearly the CIA has learned how to ga ga game and infiltrate the community note system. And but guess, wasn't hard. And I tagged Elon. <laughs> guess what? The community note went away. Really? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God. I'm gonna get that brain chip. So <laughs> so let me just uh so let me just read a little bit of this anti war article uh by Kyle Anzalone. Uh Biden hopes Kenyan police will stabilize Haiti as chaos erupts in Nairobi. Now, Dan, that's that is not what biden actually hopes right <laughs> no the whole idea is to maintain the chaos in haiti haiti has for a few years been undergoing a process um of ridding itself of chaos imposed by foreign powers namely the united states uh going back decades and this is the exact chaos that the u.s wants to impose so it can basically uh maintain its cheap supply of sweatshop labor uh, so it can um, prevent, you know, any kind of popular leader from coming to power uh, and and having Haiti reclaim its sovereignty and choose its own path. So do you, are you familiar with what's happening in Kenya right now? Yeah, there's a huge uprising against uh, against the government, which has just rolled out um, its its budget proposal for the year, which includes a whole bunch of austerity measures that uh crush the population even more so because the sub headline here is proposed reforms to tax before proposed reforms to tax laws triggered massive protests in kenyan capital leading to numerous deaths so yeah, yeah they've got they've got a lot of unrest happening in kenya right now and they're exporting their cops to haiti that doesn't make sense so What's what's really happening is the United States is using using Kenya as a proxy instead of sending in Marines 
to go do the bidding of uh, the imperialists, right? Exactly. And so yeah. what's what 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 you you showed us is that the the what they call the gangs in ha Haiti, which are actually the people joining together to fight against the oppressive oligarchs. They call them gangs. And so they're doing this under the guise of we're trying to stop the gang violence. Although the gang violence has stopped, they've come together, correct? I mean, there's it's it's not like um totally black and white that the so-called gang violence has stopped. I mean, there, there are different armed groups that have been fighting for years. However, I mean, like we talked about last time, Jimmy Cherizier, a.k.a. Barbecue, his whole program <clears throat> for the last four years or so has been trying to convince and compel these, these disparate armed groups to stop fighting. And he succeeded in a big way, but not 100%. So it's kind of this ongoing process that he's trying to get the guys that he was fighting against, the criminal armed groups, to stop committing crimes and have a revolution. And so that's a constant thing. I mean, there's, if you remember about six weeks ago, for example, there was uh, a, a YouTuber named Your, uh, Your Fellow Arab who went to Haiti yeah. in a really haphazard and pretty foolish way and ended up getting uh, kidnapped by an armed group called 400 Mauzo, which is one of the biggest kidnapping groups. And then, so what happened is, um, as, as far as I know, I, I don't, you know, I don't know, uh, he put a documentary out about it. I didn't end up watching the whole thing because I didn't really want to pay for it. But um, I, I, when I saw that this, this guy had been kidnapped, I, uh, myself and Kim Ives, my, my colleague at Haiti Liberté, we called Jimmy Cherizier, and he basically sprung into action to get this guy freed, uh, him and his Haitian fixer. And just in a WhatsApp group, he com he uh, basically got 400 Mauzo to release this guy. Um, there was some ransom paid before that had happened, but before that, it would have just been, there's no way to do it. Um, he would have been out of luck. So it's certainly a better situation than it was before. That doesn't mean everything is perfect in Haiti, but you know none of it justifies a foreign intervention, which is just police death death squads from another country. You know they they say they want to fight gangs, so they're sending a much bigger gang to do it. It doesn't make any sense. And so what this really is is the United States, the Biden administration. The imperialists, they want they have a puppet government in place right now in Haiti and they want to keep it that way. Right. The, a puppet government that oppresses the people and sells them out to corporations. Right. Yeah. There isn't a single elected official in Haiti for a couple of years now. And they keep saying, oh, we're going to have elections in a couple of years. We need to get a, a government, an interim government in. And they pledge they'll hold elections. But in order to do that, we have to send in a foreign invasion so there can be security to have elections. So the U.S.'s whole game is to basically um, establish a 10-year military occupation using Kenyans and um, forces from a uh, number of other countries, of other proxies, uh, to do the dirty work. And then it can basically control the elections. So then it can, you know, falsely claim that there's some kind of democracy. It's like what they do here. Yeah. So yeah, what, yeah, right. So what is what is the United States using as a, uh, as a bribe to get the Kenyan government to go along with this? Well, um, they gave the Kenyans hundreds of millions of dollars, whether it's I've heard it's 300 million from one source. I've heard it's 500 million. I mean, the president of Kenya is uh, his name is William Ruto. A lot of Kenyans sus believe that he was um, put into power. You know, basically the, the U.S. tipped the scales in his favor. Uh, he shouldn't be in power. He's a totally illegitimate president is what a lot of people believe. And um, he's basically kind of like a Zelensky uh, type figure. He came to a the hero, U.S. you mean? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah to a total hero. Um, he came to the U.S. about a month ago. In, uh, in, in, on May 23rd, he appeared with Biden, which is the first time an African head of state had been invited to Washington uh, in 15 years. So it you know, shows how much the U.S. respects its, its puppets in Africa. But he actually got rejected to, uh, he, he requested an appearance in Congress and 
Whoa. Republicans rejected him. He didn't even get to do that. So he's like Slow he's down. like a a low grade Zelensky kind of figure, totally corrupt. Um, and so I mean he's a puppet of the U.S. So he does what the U.S. says, and I'm sure they you know they they greased it up pretty good for him. So let me just go through this article from antiwar.com and you interject where you want, Dan. All right. As the first wave of Kenyan police arrived in Haiti on a mission to restore order, security forces in Nairobi opened fire on protesters, leaving at least five dead. On Tuesday, armed Kenyan police arrived in Haiti for a U.S.-supported mission aimed at taking power from gangs and handing it back to the Washington-installed government in Port-au-Prince. President Biden celebrated their arrival in a statement. He says, with strong support from the... Hey, hey, look at there. With uh, strong support <laughs> there from the U.S. Kenyan forces. Huh? Huh? Ken and Kenny's going to go. Oh, the, Kenny. the guy. Yeah. He's there. Yeah, you know, you know the thing. Ha! <laughs> uh, U.S. Kenyan forces, part of the multinational security support mission, arrived in Haiti, beginning an effort... That will bring much needed relief to Haitians. Oh, it's all about helping. They're helping the people, Dan. What are you being an asshole? This mission will support the Haitian National Police as they increase their anti gang operations. What do you mean relief? Would they give them a hand job? Right. They're going to give a reach around. Washington got the approval from the UN Security Council to deploy the. How the fuck did the UN. Why would the UN Security Council approve this? I mean, anybody has veto power. Why wouldn't Russia veto this, you think? Yeah, um, the Russians did not veto it because basically a number of Caribbean countries uh, went along with it because some African countries w went along with it too. When basically they saw it as they have limited um, diplomatic sort of uh, uh, cachet. They can only use so much. They can't veto every single thing they don't like at the UN Security Council. It's just, you know, real politic, I guess. What about um, China? So <laughs> what about yeah, China? I mean, the, the, Chi the Chinese are also skeptical of it. So both of those countries um, abstained. They didn't vote in support of it, but they didn't veto it. So Okay. Um, don't forget yeah. most countries are racist and don't care about these people. That's you gotta right. figure that you have to remember that, too. Sure, and it's not in their... Hemisphere. UN peace. I mean, go ahead. Let me say, to be fair, to be fair, the Russians have been um, extremely uh, open um, and are very, very aware of what's happening there. They're not just like, this is the other side of the world. This is by the US. This is not, you know, we don't care. They're very, they're very uh, interested in what's happening there. Um, so it's not that the Russians nor the Chinese, you know, are just kind of like hands off. It's just, uh, or that they don't care. It's just, it's just a matter of geopolitics. So let's remind people: UN peacekeepers have a dark history in Haiti, including creating a cholera outbreak that killed ten thousand Haitians. What a relief! They're gonna, they're there to give relief. Additionally, the previous multinational force deployed to Haiti committed rampant sexual assault <laughs> against the Haitian women. Does the relief ever stop? That relief never stops. <laughs> Uh, the White House claims the current mission has important accountability and oversight measures. <laughs> They're filming it. <laughs> can, I, can I interject there? Yeah. I mean, so when so when this when the U.S. was pushing for uh, the U.N. Security Council to approve this mission, they were saying they kept saying we've learned all we've learned so many lessons from the last uh, oh, the U.N. mission that went from 2014 to 2017 and then morphed into and stayed until 2019, and that included raping boys and girls. Uh, I mean, and none of this was ever, ever, ever punished. There was never any accountability. So now they were saying then, oh, we've we've learned our lesson. We're not going to make those sa same mistakes again. <laughs> now, the status of forces agreement that was just signed by the Haitian puppet government that was not elected um, and the Kenyan government that very well may have been appointed by the United States, uh, that status of forces agreement says that the uh, the participants in this mission have total legal impunity. They have 100% legal impunity, number one. And and then number two, the, the thing that just came out today, there's like a big Canadian NGO that already said, that's saying that, oh, the gangs are going to use human shields. They've embedded themselves within the population as if there's some like completely separate phenomenon than, 
you know, the people living in yeah. the, the, the poor neighborhoods. That, that's oh who they God. are. Those are people. The gangs so are from the neighborhoods. Already, yeah, exactly. They're preemptively justifying massacres by this mission uh, against the, the Haitian masses. That's exactly what they're doing. So they're already telegraphing it, and they're going to have total impunity to do this. So it's all just, you know, a big lie. Wait, are you telling me there's not going to be accountability when you outsource this to Kenyan cops? <laughs> Jesus. Christ. Right, right. And like I wrote a piece back in October where I examined the relatively recent history of Kenyan uh, police death squads. And that's not even my term. That was the term used by the UN Special Rapporteur Philip Alston back in 2009. He wrote a, a big report um, on the existence of police death squads and the and the Kenyans the Kenyan human rights figures who actually collaborated and, and gave him information, they were executed in their car like a block away from a police station after after he left. Um, there have been cops, Kenyan cops, who were part of these death squads who blew the whistle, and then they were murdered and disappeared. And so every few years, what's happened in Kenya is there is some death squad that's found out, and it turns out these were paid uh, uh these were paid and acting on the orders of Kenyan politicians who are tied to the U.S. And then they say, oh, we disbanded that death squad and they reshuffle the cops among the greater police body. And then it turns out there's a new death squad and then there's another and another. And so they still exist to this day. And I think even just um, the numbers I've seen in this current uprising against uh, these these IMF imposed measures that the Kenyan government is going along with is I think 23 or maybe 26 people have already been killed, including people just executed on the street. Well, even the State Department's human rights report on Kenya identified numerous crimes committed by Nairobi security forces. And right now, Kenyans have been in the streets for weeks in opposition to a proposed tax hike of 16 percent on bread and 25 percent on cooking oil. On Tuesday, well, the seed oils aren't good for them anyway. <laughs> On Tuesday, Christ. clashes erupted between protesters and police after the tax increase was pre was passed. Protesters broke through police lines and stormed the parliament building, which was partially set ablaze. Police opened fire on the rioters, killing five. Security forces also deployed less lethal crowd control weapons, leading to injuries. The half-sister of former President Barack Obama was tear-gassed. Well, imagine if it was his full sister, how bad it would be. Wow. I saw that video, by the way. Kenyan President William Ruto denounced the protesters as an existential threat to our republic and said the, their actions were treasonous. They don't have a republic. They didn't vote for you. But he said he deployed the military across the country to restore order. And here's what you say. There isn't a more corrupt and brutal police force in Africa than Kenya. A U.N. investigation called them death squads. They've murdered and disappeared protesters on orders of politicians. That's why Biden is sending those murderous motherfuckers to Haiti. Can't the Clinton Foundation do something? As Kenyans police <laughs> land in Haiti, other elements of the same brutal force are violently repressing protests with live ammo and tear gas in Nairobi. Has the United States merely replaced one set of gangs with another? Asks. Yeah, of course That's they rhetorical, have. That's rhetorical, I hope. Yeah. So here's yeah, a little... No, I, oh, hang on. Go ahead. What? The guy, the guy who runs that account, Kevin Pina, uh, who did good reporting a few decades ago, he's serious. He thinks that, you know, the he's, he's basically pro-intervention. Really? Um, he, yeah, he, and he, he considers himself some kind of anti-imperialist. He's, he's basically a, a fraud. Um, but, you know, he says, oh, these are gangs and they're all backed by the CIA. And that's been basically the ultra left position um, that, you know, they've none of them, none of the ultra left uh, has bothered to go to go actually, you know, do the reporting in Haiti and go talk to these alleged gang leaders or so-called gang leaders. And he's he's among them. So he's just totally convinced that they're tools to justify this intervention. But it doesn't make any sense. Like, why, if, if they had, if they were tools, why would you need an intervention to go send them in? What is, what would the, what is the target of the intervention? So anyway, that's. So I'm not going to show this video because it'll get us demonetized. Let's go. Irony is you send police to Haiti to face armed gangs, then deploy the army to help police in Kenya deal with unarmed kids. Well, that just sounds like a, uh, you know, synergy kind of. Yeah. 
Uh, as Rudo's police kill unarmed protesters in the streets of Nairobi, another con- in, at, in Kenya, another contingent of the same force arrives in Haiti for peacekeeping operations against gangs. Only the United States government could contrive such a convoluted mess. Here's a little bit more. Two black countries on two different continents, abused and impoverished through colonization, are linked with one another, with one hired as the solution for the other. Here's, in addition to their regular salaries, Kenyan security forces sent to ha- Haiti will receive between 1100 and 1500 per month. Their what? S- their starting salary for a Haitian police officer is less than 200 a month. Wait, what's all that three hundred million going to? <laughs> what is all that they're only getting paid? That's the bribe part. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, and here's um, Senator Edwin Safuna says this to the Kenyan police. The uh, the uh, here's what he says. I want to speak to the Kenya police, my brothers and sisters in uniform. Those young children on the streets are not your enemies. The enemy is the one shipping you to Haiti. Despite the position of the people of Kenya that we do not support the deployment of police to Haiti, he is shipping off our police officers. And to add insult to injury, he's only paying them a fifth of what they were supposed to be paid on that particular mission. We are being told our police officers have been paid only 20,000 shillings to go to Haiti. Yet William Ruto was given 100 million US dollars by the US government for this particular mission. He is eating 80% of that money and sending you off to face those people in Haiti. And it is against the wishes of the people of Kenya. So I want our police officers to know that the public is not your enemy. We are fighting on the same side. Even here in parliament, members of the police officers who work here were supposed to be added money, 20,000 shillings in addition to uh, the allowances they receive here. Their boss came here and told them that, they told the leadership of parliament that if police officers working here are added money to their salaries at Iwataribu Kazi, and yet these people are working for the Republic of Kenya. Wow, so that guy's going to be dead soon. I, 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 I'm, I'm not even joking. Like, that's kind of, that's risky, isn't it, Dan? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Kenyan, you know, dissident figures and opposition figures have, have been uh, under all kinds of threats. Some of them have been killed. Definitely, it's a, it's, it's a, hairy, a hairy situation. I mean, you, you know, there has been a fair amount of opposition from... Um, some of the some political figures to this intervention to sending Kenyan cops to Haiti, um, and I think I mean one of the there was there was a snag back in February because uh, when the former de facto prime minister at that time the de facto prime minister Ariel Henry was in power and he left to go to Haiti to or he left Haiti rather to go to Kenya to sign a, a bilateral agreement and he got. Then this whole, uh, the, the alliance of armed groups called Viva Ensemble lived together, led by Cherizier. They went to the airport and basically were firing so his plane couldn't land. He was forced to turn around. Um, they, uh, uh, they suddenly couldn't, there was no, like, Ken, there was no Haitian government to sign, to, there was no existing Haitian government, even a fake one. So the Kenyan opposition was saying, how can you deploy the police to a country that doesn't even have a government. And so I don't think that was actually ever resolved. I think the, I think Ruto just forced it through, just said, yeah, we're sending them anyway, because now there's a new puppet government. But, you know, there's, there's no like legitimacy to this at all. (laughs) So again, do you, do you, how do you, do you see this? uh, What do you see it for the next six months? Do you think they were ever going to send Marines, because that's what they're doing. They're sending these Kenyan thugs, these death squads to Haiti in lieu of sending Marines, right? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's a, there is so little clarity and information provided. For one thing, the 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 um, the the mission, the U.S. and the Kenyans have basically said nothing publicly, nor to uh, the U.N. Security Council. You know, I have sources in the U.N. Security Council who tell me that they're not telling us anything. They just, you know, say we're going to learn the lessons from the last um, UN peacekeeping mission. We're not going to make mistakes, but they don't say anything about rules of engagement. They don't say how long they're intending to be there. They don't say what they're going to be doing. Are they going to be just stationed at what they call critical infrastructure around the, you know, the ports, um, around government buildings? Are they going to be 
going into the neighborhoods where these armed groups are and engaging them and fighting them. What are they even going to be doing? No one actually knows. Um, so, and also, at least so far, the, the first group that arrived on Tuesday was 400 police. 400 police, I mean, these are Kenyan police who are going to embed with the Haitian police. That's not a whole lot. I mean, you're talking about there's the estimates I've seen are several thousand, uh, you know, quote unquote, gang members, armed uh, members of armed groups. So what are 400 uh, cops going to do who don't speak the language, who don't know the lay of the land, who are just, you know, have no idea what they're doing? I, I mean, I don't see this going well, even if they get they said they're going to get two thousand five hundred um uh, police total from different countries, from several different countries, not only from Kenya. Even with 2,500, you need, I mean, you know, the UN and, and military experts will tell you, you need like four to one, five to one ratio to be able to have any kind of successful mission. So, you know, they would need like, I don't know, tens of thousands to do this. And, and you know, let alone the whole idea of waging a counterinsurgency how completely failed that concept is going back decades and decades of U.S. occupations all over the world. So, I mean, I don't know what these guys are going to be doing, but they are at a severe disadvantage. The whole thing seems extremely poorly planned and concocted. And I got to wonder if, you know, those cops getting off the plane celebrating, I don't know if they have body bags, you know, in their backpacks or what, but I don't think it's going to go well for them. Dan, I appreciate you coming on. This is uh, quite a story, uh, and it's not going away. So I'm sure we'll have you back on to check uh, to to update Wait, us on this. Could this affect our post World War II rules based order? <laughs> uh, everybody, check out Dan Cohen at Uncaptured Media, uh, and he's got a, his latest documentary is Haiti Intervention versus Revolution. Thanks for, so much for your time, Dan. Appreciate it. Thank you, Jimmy. Hey, despite everything the Fed has been trying, we're still feeling the effects of inflation. Filling up your car, your grocery cart, home repairs, everything's more expensive, and most of you are paying these bills with a credit card. Credit card debt is at an all-time high. We already reported on that. If you're a homeowner, there's a way out. You need to call my friends over at American Financing. They're not really my friends, but uh, <laughs> they can put together a plan. I don't know them personally. Uh, they can put together a plan to pay off that high interest credit card debt and create meaningful savings for you every month. There are people just like you, and they save an average of $854 a month. Uh, and closing in as fast as 10 days. Don't wait. Get yourself into a better position. Call their salary-based mortgage consultants today so they don't work on commission, which I think is a big deal. It costs nothing to get started, and if you start today, you could delay two mortgage payments, giving you greater savings up front. American Financing can help you get that monkey off your back. What do you do? You call 888-804-0303. That's 888-804-0303. Or visit AmericanFinancing.net slash Jimmy. Hey, come see us on tour. I'll be in Davenport, Iowa, Las Vegas, Nevada, Chicago, Illinois, and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Go to JimmyDoor.com for a link for tickets.